What is up YouTube? This is Tyrone Trinity, your diesel soldier, and today we're gonna get away from the two hole again and talk about 91 Bravo, which is the diesel all-wheel diesel mechanic. Let's go. Alright guys, so before you start hating on the comment or all that, I'm just gonna let you guys know this is based on my experience and the majority of experience of the other soldier mechanics in the army. Again, this is based on observation, not facts. So you can quote me on everything or you can't quote on everything because again, it's just based on observation. All right, so the first expectation you will have is that you can be wrenching right, right on then and there right then and there once you get to your unit or whatever but that's not the case so wrenching in the army depends on your component and your unit if you are active duty that's the highest probability you will have to be wrenching all the time if you're a national guard or reserve um, no not really because we only get one week in a month and two weeks in a year of those one week in a month how much wrenching time you're gonna learn so with that said if you're a National Guard a United States Army Reservist wrenching time is probably not gonna be there yes you will learn some things if you are in orders but you have six years in your order in your contract that you can fulfill that so it's up to you to be proactive and take some classes and learn how to be a mechanic while being a citizen soldier. All right, the second expectation you'll have as a diesel mechanic in the army is that you're not having the right tools. If you're a mechanic already and you transition or join the army, you're gonna get angry all the time because not having the right tool is so irritating because you're supposed to have, we have, civilians have the luxury of accessing on the tool truck whenever you can and buying in harbor freight but you cannot do that once you're in deployment or for example you're on the field so what happened is there's a lot of macgyvering and jerry rigging on the side and you know when there's a lot of macgyvering and jerry rigging another soldier will have to pick up on your slack because one day that thing is going to break down again and guess what that bolt is rounded off and we don't have an extractor set barely so not having the right tools is one of those things you will expect so if you think that you can join the army and oh we have the best of the best some of us do and especially the high speed unit but if you're in a mutual affairs sorry to kind of bash on them or some kind of like headquarters or paperwork pencil pusher guys you're not gonna really have any of those because they're not it's not in their priority but if you are in a construction unit or infantry unit you might have a lot of wrenching time and you have a lot of high-speed tools but then again that depends on where you at what component or what unit you are in all right so the third expectation once you came out of high school you want to go to base training you have to go to base training and you got AIT and let me tell you right now advanced individual training or AIT sucks why does it suck well they want you to learn everything in condensed manner which is from A to I mod so a mod is basically the tm or the technical manual which i will touch base later and then b mod is basic maintenance like taking out the engine which is so easy to pass the class all you have to do is show up you don't have to do anything just gotta show up do your pt and then just go, uh, basically do what the sergeants do ask you to do that is it it's not about Wrenching, it's about soldiering, how to be a soldier mechanic. Not the mechanic side, but more on the soldier side. It's really hard to explain it until you get there. Let me give you an example. We're gonna have 
one of the mods is going to be tire patching for a week tire patching I know it sounds like a joke but that's actually the last mod of the AIT or the schooling or advanced individual training that's the last thing you got to do is patching the tire I know it's all joke but it is what it is and most of your training is gonna come from your unit and I, I don't want to keep going back to the components because I'm kind of sound like I'm repeating myself but it is what it is your training or your knowledge of being a mechanic has to be proactive if you're in reserve or in National Guard but even active duty it's up to you again it's up to you if you want to be that soldier who knows everything or be that soldier that just change parts and change change oil or grease the fittings that's up to you the last on my list will be army technology army technology sucks I'm not saying that we have like the 1990s technology no but we do have like you would expect the best military in the world to have the best equipment that's not how it works it depends on how much budget you have in your unit and your component so it's kind of hard to be really talk about because it sucks you have a TM or a technical manual which how you learn to be a mechanic yes you had to write you had to follow the instruction reading it and learn that's how you learn to be a mechanic I'm not kidding ask any other diesel mechanic soldiers they will let you know that most of their stuff is on a TM or <clears throat> you get lucky sometimes especially on a guard and reserve that they have miltex or military technicians that will they will guide you and kind of teach you some things that you have you can learn while wrenching but they're not really there to hold your hands they're just gonna ask you oh how do I do this look up in the TM how do I do this look up in the TM even parts ordering parts it's all on the TM so with that said yes we needed a TM but sometimes TMs have to be updated so the way that you do it back in the 90s or back in the 2000s is different now but the vehicle is still the same so and then when you load the computer it is so slow like dial up slow you can't even load a PDF like sometimes when you load a PDF it crashes and that's one of those things that man kind of disappointing like you would have you would think that have the army the best powerful you know whatever in the world gotta have the best one but not really man that's it's not how it works so I know you guys might think that all I do is bash on the army or being a diesel mechanic I actually like being a diesel mechanic I learned a lot from being a diesel mechanic uh, I'm just saying these things because I want the younger guys to have the kind of a knowledge of what they're going into because most of the soldiers that I've been working with they don't know that this is how it works and they thought that after they finish their AIT and basic training they can just go wrenching and that's not really the way the army is it's you got to go through the process of learning by yourself which is stupid and it really depends on your NCO but at the end of the day what makes the difference of civilian mechanic and army mechanic is that we embrace the suck situation is never going to be on our side it's never going to be on our favor but we get the job done in the battlefield on training deployment we have to get the job done it's just if you don't we don't have you don't have the right tools that's fine but we are going to get that vehicle going no matter what all right guys hopefully you guys like my video even though you are not joining the army or you have no affiliations with the army or you just want to find out what the army soldier diesel mechanic does and expectation that we have once you join and that's about it uh, subscribe to my channel support my channel by giving that a like 
and I'm out.